I'm back. Didn't expect to be back this soon. Actually, hang on. Let me do that. Yeah, my head looks a little bit better there. Sorry, my big stupid thing is in the way. I guess we'll take off the, uh, the pop filter for now. I'm, I'll pop a few peas and we'll see what happens. So anyway, hi, I'm back. Um, interesting. After I finished talking to you last time, uh, someone sent me a Twitter uh, thread which I've put down below. And that thread is basically someone who got the Barnes & Noble's Nook, I think, version, or they got a version of the game early, a couple of days ago, the 12th. And they basically did a review of it and broke it down and sort of didn't spoil too much, but they spoiled, and they explained stuff, which is really interesting. So I want to go over that with you right now. Uh, I want to take a look at that. And the things I want to look at, there's two things I want to look at, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. The things I want to look at is the uh, table of contents. I really want to look at that with you and go over that real fast. And then I want to go over the idea of certain how dice, how the, the dice mechanic works, the target number system. And I want to talk to you about the rank system. Now, I don't understand all of this. Again, I haven't seen the whole book. I've just seen what this guy's talked about. He's got a bit of a dislike of it. Uh, he finds it overly mechanical. I see it and go, yeah, you know what? It's okay. I, it's, it's crunchy, but it's medium crunch. It's not, it's not, it's the kind of crunch I like. I like medium crunch. I don't like super crunchy. I don't like too light. I like medium crunch. So I'm good with that. So let's take a look at the table of, uh, the table of contents. I always do that wrong. The table of contents right there. And if we look at it, we see it starts with an introduction, a role, what, you know, so what is role playing, what you need to play uh, using this book, play it safe, which he copies the play it safe. And it's actually a really good um, set of advice on how to run the game and how to basically make your game less, um, I guess, hateful. It's not as bad as that bloody, you know, game agreement safe space thing that went around a few years ago, which was just, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Role-playing is not therapy. Therapy is therapy. Role-playing is a game. The idea is that you're playing a game. So I get really sort of just arsed off when I see people trying to bring all that baggage and garbage into a gaming space. It's like, no, we're not here for therapy. We're here for support and friendship and all that good stuff, but we're not here to help you deal with your issues. You need to be an adult. Anyway, that's a me thing, not a you thing necessarily, I'm not trying to force my opinions on you, okay? But anyway, so I like how they handle it. That's pretty groovy. Um, in fact, I've got the tweet open in another window. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go look at that piece again. I got It's a huge thread. Like I said, I'm going to link it down below for you so you can go take a look. But basically it says, uh, play it safe. Players should always treat each other with respect and kindness. After all, you're playing together to have fun, and that only works if everyone in the group enjoys the game at all times. Uh, this is as true when you're playing with new people you've just met as when you're playing with longtime friends. Not bad. That's, that's good advice. Then it says, be considerate. You and your group can tell all sorts of stories set in the Marvel multiverse. However, not everyone is always going to want to be involved in the same kinds of stories, especially if it involves realistic violence or horrific elements. To make sure that everyone in your game is having fun, it's smart to talk ahead of time about what kind of game you want to play and what sorts of adventures you want your heroes to take part in of in that game. So we're basically talking about a session zero. And I like that they put that right up front at the start of the game. Session Zero has become something very new in role-playing games a lot lately, but it's a good thing. If you, as either narrator or player, want to do something potentially disturbing or disruptive in a game, you should always be sure to run it by the other players first. This can range from something as simple as rough language all the way up to the untimely death of the characters. Now, back in Phase Rip, I made a rule. If you swore, 25 karma, penalty. Heroes don't swear. It was as simple as that. You know, you can you can pretend to swear and say mm, frickin' fraggle or frack or frigal and then we just in our brains we see the, the asterisks and hashtags and exclamation points and all that above your character's head. But if you just drop the F bomb or you know, whatever, you lost twenty five karma. Surprisingly, my players learn to control themselves real fast. Now, if I was running an Iron Age game or a Vigilante game or a Marvel Knights game or a anything darker and edgier Swear all you want. I don't care. But that's got to be set up front, and I agree with that. And then there's a bunch of other stuff about it. Um, 
you know, and how to, how to avoid giving away surprises and what have you. But it's good, and I like that they put that in. And then they talk about what, which universe, and they talk about how it's your universe, and you're doing what you want. But you should be able to feel free to take your character, and if you're allowed to, go to a game at a convention and show up and say, Hi, my character would like, I'd like to play in the game. Here's my character. And you pop in, you know, Ultimate Universe style, or whatever the case may be. You show up. This, sorry, this gets up my nerves uh you show up from the other universe and that's a good thing i don't see any of that as a bad thing okay uh you know uh basically commonly known as earth 616 most of the pro sorry hang on let me open it up. The main Marvel comic universe is commonly known as Earth-616. Most of the profiles and other details published in this book are for characters who hail from that universe. Makes sense. However, the universe in which you play is your own game. It's actually its own separate universe, one run by your game's narrator. Things that happen there only affect the continuity events in that universe. Events that happen in other universes might be mirrored in your game's universe. They might not be. They might not. They might not. That's entirely up to your narrator. Uh, and at the same time, each character has their own continuity. As your character's player, you control theirs. Most characters spend their entire lives inside their home universe. However, you can, if you like, move your character from one narrator's game to another. In effect, you're transporting them from their home universe to an entirely different universe. If they return to their original game, they retain all their memories and experiences from their adventures outside their home universe. Hopefully they survive the trip. See, this is nice. I like this because it leans into the comic booky aspect of it all and and marvel let, let's be honest sorry i want to just adjust my camera a little bit because it's my head there's too much headspace marvel has joined the multiverse game late compared to dc which had it since the 50s marvel really joined it late in the what the 90s other than the squadron supreme stuff really uh so it's nice to see them really leaning into it more and more and more and making it a part of the game baked right in so you can have as much fun and change whatever you want to change as a narrator and not have everyone go well, that's not how thor behaved well that's how thor behaves here hey thor in this universe has red hair like in norse myth and we're done Mwah. love it because i'm that i'm a multiverse kind of uh, DM. Okay, so the next we see we have the core mechanics. Uh, basically, if you guys are on the thread, follow along. Otherwise, if you can see this image, good for you. The action check, which we're going to talk about. Fantastic rolls, target numbers, we're going to talk about that. Target modifiers by objectives. Do, 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 do. The basics, right? Character profile, how to read one. And I love that there's karma, and I love that they call hit points health, because that takes me right back to phase rip. MSH, best game ever. Uh, so that's pretty good stuff. Then it explains combat, and then we have how to create a character, and rank is a thing. And I'm not sure I fully understand rank. I will once I have the book and I can read it. But based on what I'm seeing, I think I get it. It's sort of like power level in Mutants and Masterminds, maybe. Now, I'm not a fan of that in superhero games, but some people are. And if it helps mitigate disparate levels, that could be a good thing. I don't know if it does or not. Uh, basically, how to build a character. Now, remember, what we said earlier is, is you're only going to have in the playtest the stuff that's only available for the 11 characters plus the dozen or so utility powers. So don't get too excited yet. Uh, archetypes. Everybody has an archetype, and that leads to ability caps, I think, and also ability raised ability caps. So, like, certain archetypes are better at certain things. Again, not something I love, but not something I hate. So I want to see it before I really judge it. Uh, backstories and traits is awesome because that's what's missing in Phase Rip always for me. Then we have the powers, as we said before. Then we have Marvel Heroes, which are just going to be the templates at this point in time uh, for said Marvel characters, which are good to go. That's where I want to be. Uh, which are good to go. Uh, then we have a section for narrators, which is only two pages long, so that's not so great. Uh, and then we have the uh, Enter Hydra and Adventure. And then Glossary, Character Sheet, Rules, and Experience. So that's that's the, the table of contents. We're getting a full game, just not a full, full game. Uh, and also they reveal in the... Uh, I think it's in the... Um, in the... Um, introduction, that the official game is going to be hardcover. Me gusta. I like that. I like hardcover books. I've always liked hardcover books, so that's a good thing for me. Okay, next up, we're going to talk about target numbers. Now, let me make this a bit... No, I want this one. Thank you. Make that a bit bigger for you so you can take a look at it and see what's going on. So, target numbers range... 
Hang on. Target numbers range from 8 to 40. It's a pretty big gap. Uh, action, uh, by default, all action checks are challenging. So they sit right in the middle at zero modifier of challenging. Um, and then there's a table we're going to look at in a second which shows you what challenging is for each rank. Okay, so I think that's the rank you're at determines what your challenging is. From there, you apply. Let's say, okay, well, it's trivial. Well, minus seven off that target number. Well, it's impossible. Plus seven to that target number. Hmm, okay. So basically... Uh, what we can see is a narrator can easily modify a target number by assigning it an adjective. Trivial, easy, routine, challenging, difficult, ridiculous, impossible. Straightforward. See the target number modifier's action table for how this works. And we see that right there. Right there in the middle, the, the blue box. For instance, imagine that Colossus and Nightcrawler are paragliding, paragliding on paragliding. Uh, paragliding on vacation and decide to zoom through a tiny hole in the cliff. The maneuver is considered a ridiculous task for a rank 5 character. A rank 5 task has a challenging target number of 19, so if the task is ridiculous, the target number is 19 plus 4, because it's ridiculous, giving us a 23. With an agility of 8, Colossus needs to roll a 23 minus 8, 15 or better. On the other hand, the nimble character, the nimble Nightcrawler has an agility of 14. He needs only roll 23 minus 14, a 9 or better. So the rank determines the base roll, the difficulty determines a plus or minus, and then you remove the ability score from that target number and then roll your 3d6 and add them up. I can live with that. I can live with that a lot. And you have a static target, which is if the action is a static target number, the action check uses the format ability versus target number, such as might versus target number 20 action check. That's pretty groovy stuff. I can live with that. That isn't crazy. It, it actually, in my head, that flies pretty fast at my table. That's going to be good. And then when we look at the target numbers, we see them here. Challenging target number by rank. So rank 1 through rank 25. So that's your rank scale in the game. 1 to 25. I'm assuming 25 is pretty bloody cosmic. Uh, and what is challenging gets harder the higher your rank. Why? Because your rank limits on your ability scores are going to be reducing that number. So clearly we can't have one static challenging number, plus or minus. So I like the fact that they've moved what is challenging based on what your rank is. That's really cool. I like that mechanic. I'm excited about that mechanic. Uh, I'm not going to go into anything more. That's all I wanted to touch on because the rest of it's, you know, his opinion about how stuff goes. Like I said, I'm going to put a th the link to the Twitter thread, the tweet storm, as they call it. And it's a lot. Make sure you see replies because you got to unfold everything as you go. Um, and you can read it yourself if you're interested and you want to know more. But based on this, I'm excited. I got to figure out rank a little bit more and I got to look at the characters and how they're built and I'll see how that stuff works. But that'll be when I have the, the book in my hand. So I'm pretty good um, with that. I'm pretty excited about that. I'm pretty stoked about that. And from what I'm seeing of the game system, I'm happy. I like this mechanic. It gets a little wonky with the dice where if you roll three sixes, it's a really good roll. But if you roll six, one, six, because of that, that what they call, uh, there's a term for it. It's not a wild die. It's called a, oh, give me a second, hang on, there's a term for it, um, do, 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 play testing, yep, that's nice, actions, yep, three day six roll, uh, fantastic, if you get three ones, you totally botch, that's kind of cool. Uh, there's a name for this check digit. That's it. It's the check digit die. And when you buy, when they put out the official Marvel set, there's going to be a red, two white and a red, so you can just use two same colored d6 and one different colored d6 and you'll get the same effect on that check die it's a wild die it's the marvel die whatever they need a better name than check digit that's something i think everybody in playtest is gonna be like mm, no and if not at least i will um but you roll your dice you take your chances and like i said target numbers can go up to 40 so i think it's something interesting 
And I think they've got a fun mechanic there, and I'm looking forward to playing it. But again, I need to figure out how rank works, how character creation works. And also, they recommend you having multiple rank characters in the same group, but they don't provide really a mechanic, it seems, for how you're going to prevent Thor from outclassing Night Thrasher. So that might be something playtesting is going to have to develop as well. We'll see. I am convinced there will be lots and lots of playtesting material to come. Okay, I just wanted to talk to you about that. I just wanted to get that down with you and sort of say, hey, hey, gabba gabba, hey, hey, this is what's going on. Uh, I, I just, you know, I found this information and I confirmed with someone else I know who's got the information that it's accurate. And uh, once I had that information accurate, I was like, you know what? Let's do another video. Two in one day. Crazy go nuts. So until next I see you, make mine marvel, man. Peace, love, geek, and hopefully next time I see you, I'll have a copy of the book in my hands.